Twas the night before Dicemas, when all through the home not a creature was stirring, not even a gnome. The axes were hung by the chimney with care, in the hopes that the dice goblin soon would be there. The children were nestled with swords in their beds, while visions of battle danced in their heads. Ribo wife in her kerchief and in her cute cap, luckily had been revived from my infinity stone dice snap. When out on the lawn there arose such a clatter, I heard my trap spring and check to see what was the matter. There he was in his cute goblin sash, I ran out the door, I was there in a flash. I grabbed the little gobbo, all covered in snow, and with a toothy grin he said, ah, here you go. You see, he gives presents to all who can catch this little fella, with his skin so green and a hint of yellow. I ran inside with the present in gear, everyone yelled in a good dice miss cheer, hurrah, huzzah, and everything nice, this Christmas shall be filled with dice. I was so thankful for this green goblin guy, but I knew he couldn't stay, away he'd soon fly. He whistled for a cab, and when it came near, the license plate said dice, and it had more dice in the mirror. If anything, I could say that this goblin was rare, but I thought, that's just dice, monsieur, as it went up in the air. I heard him exclaim, ere he drove out of sight, happy dice, miss, to all, and to all a good night. Well, it just wouldn't be Dicemas without making our own dice. That's what D&DIY YouTubers do anyway, and I think that we need to give these away as a present. And what present would be complete without a dice box for your new dice? So we're going to use our Dice Goblin dice molds and make ourselves a set of Christmas dice to give away for Christmas this year to one lucky boy or girl. As is the holiday tradition, I mix up in equal parts of Part A and Part B Envirotex Light Resin and mix it until there are no more streaks and add a ton of really bright green mica powder. I have links to all of what I'm going to use in the description down below, and this is a vibrant green. But we also need to make this way too early and forget that we have more prep to do on our molds. So I'm going to set that resin aside and use this gold mica powder, some of the stuff that I've been using for a long time, to go ahead and line the inside of our dice box mold with mica powder. I want it to kind of look like a ribbon on a present with this gold here. So I'm just going to go and do a crisscross right across the left side and going up and down. Any excess mica, no problem. You can just knock it out into the trash or into the molds. There is a lot of mica being used here and it gets thrown up in the air, so I definitely recommend wearing your Christmas dust mask. Now, after that resin sat there for a while, there's a lot of surface bubbles before I even pour it. So I'm going to take a lighter and pop those and get ready to add my alcohol ink in because we're going to do a dirty Christmas pour. But yet again, I did this way too early and I am all sorts of holiday scatterbrained right now. So I need to set that resin aside one more time, lay out my my wax paper and set up my mold so that I can actually pour the resin in them. After it sat there for a moment, I add a little bit of the white alcohol ink and add two more drops of the red alcohol ink, giving us a nice dirty lid of this resin. That's going to make an awesome dirty pour for our dice, and we've done that a bunch of times before, but it's never looked quite so festive. You can add more red or more white or whatever colors you want to do to make them stand out more. I actually don't add too much to it because I want green to be the main color, so just a few drops of red or white here and after every pour or two I reload with a little bit more alcohol ink so that we do have some vibrant red and white layered in with that green. I pour a little bit of the extra resin on top of the lids of the molds and then fill up my box molds so that I can get a nice looking Christmas present. That gold will stay on the outside and we will still get a nice green, red, and white inside of our present. Now all we have to do is put the lids onto the bottom halves of each mold and shimmy them into place. There will be some extra resin that pops out the side, that's no problem, that's ideal, that means there's enough resin in there, and now we can put them inside of the pressure pot. I'm going to set them in the pressure pot for at least 24 hours, preferably 72, that way they'll be a glass-like hardness so that we can sand them. But as we pull them out of the pressure pot, one thing is already done, our present molds. This is going to look amazing for this dice box, and as I pull them out, I am really happy with how that ribbon looks. I could have been a lot more neat with it, but the whole thing is a dirty pour, so it should look a little bit dirty. The outsides and the inner 
part look like they have rim and everything except the bottom. I think this looks ideal, but we'll come back to this box in a moment because we need to focus on these amazing looking dice. Now they already look really, really cool, but there's some more that we're going to do to them in a little bit. They are really, really shiny. The layers are so visible between the green and the red with little bits of white here and there. Absolutely love them, but the edges on the lidded part are a little bit, we'll call it bah humbug. They just need a little bit more fixing up to be jolly as can be. And that's only one face that actually needs to be sanded, so I'm going to take this glass pane to sand upon and some Zona papers to get it a glass-like polish, add a little water to a Zona paper, and then all I need to do is sand up one face. Well, really the bottom faces and all of its edges, so to me that's the one's face because it's opposite the 20. Now I go through all the grits and we have a completely sanded set of dice here and they are ready to be inked. Now I happen to have an ink with my Vallejo colors here, a polished gold that is the exact same color as that ribbony gold. So I'm going to add that into the numbers and it should blend in well with the dice box and look like one cohesive present or gift, though we will do more for this present in a little bit. So I get my Yule Tide painting brush out, fill it up with paint and fill in the numbers. I wipe off any excess paint with my finger and Jiminy Christmas, those are some great looking dice. I am so glad I could share this dice Christmas skill with all of you. Did somebody say sketch Sorry, I'm late. I don't want to hear it, man. I warned you last time. You were not allowed to be late. You're fired. You're done. Oh, Get out. Come on, man. You... If I look bad, you look bad. What does that mean? We're the same person. Together, we can share our skills. Did somebody say Skillshare? Man, I am so great at transitions, and God is it good to have the king back. Thank you to Skillshare so much for continuing to sponsor my videos, including this one. If you haven't heard of Skillshare before, they're an online learning community with thousands of videos for creative people to learn new skills or explore their existing passions. They've got an absolute ton of different classes and different styles, from resin work to script writing, so maybe you can learn to write your own transitions, I guess from people who are second best compared to me, but you could still learn from them. Absolutely kidding, these people are amazing, and they put so much work into them and it's all designed around learning so you're not going to have any ads and you can just watch and learn at your own pace as you go. They even have some other YouTube creators you might have heard of like this YouTube success class by Marquise Brownlee is fantastic. I love it and Marquise is always awesome. So why don't I help you and you help me because the first 1,000 people to use my link in the description below will get a one month free trial of Skillshare so that you can explore your creativity today. But let's get back to some Christmas. I thought that we could make Christmas even more special for somebody who's never played D&D before by upgrading their D&D starter set. So, come on, Wizards of the Coast, what are you doing with this six set of RPG dice? That's nothing. Let's give them a real set of seven RPG dice, and they're going to be amazing. Because these are the Christmas set, man. They look so good. I'm very, very pleased with how these turned out. The dirty pour layers look fantastic. The red is so visible with little speckles of white here and there. But that really, really bright, vibrant Christmas green is very much at the forefront of this set of dice. It makes me jolly just thinking about them, and it makes me even more jolly knowing that this might be somebody's very first one since they're going to get it in their D&D starter set. Man, those layers on that D6 just are so poppin' and look so dang good. But not only that, they get the dice box that is going to come with them, which looks just perfect for the set. That gold is nearly identical to the paint that I used, and so I just think that this is one of the most cohesive sets that I've made in a long, long time. But looks aren't everything. Though they do look great, they feel great and they spin great on my little display stand here. Half of dice is how they sound, and so why don't we listen to this Christmas set? Man, they even sound good being rolled in their own dice box, but there's more that we can do. Remember when I added these dice to the box? Whoops, by the way, because I rolled a nat one, but we'll just consider it that I was getting the bad luck out of there. I noticed that the box has a spacer in it. Come on, wizards, you don't need to put a spacer in there. You could save a lot of cardboard, but that spacer does allow us to actually fit the dice box inside of there. And I did notice that it has some pre-made character sheets for a bunch of different characters and races and classes. So with the human fighter, the elf wizard, 
included the halfling rogue, the dwarf cleric, which by the way, I'm sending them a mini of a dwarf cleric from a wizard's game, so I know they could have added that, as well as another human fighter with a great axe, and why not give them Twintig the Dice Goblin miniature as well? I want them to have a fully completed set of minis to play with on their starter set, because this set doesn't come with minis, and what D&D game is complete without dice and minis? We might as well give them the set of six dice, I don't need them, that way they have more dice, and now they have the D&D starter set Dicemas Edition, featuring Ribonator dice. <clears throat> Wizards of the Coast reach out to me while I add some gold wrapping paper, you know it's gotta be gold on this starter set here, and now we will have our official Dicemas Christmas. So, Merry Dicemas to whoever receives this. You might be wondering how to receive it, what I'm gonna actually do is go to my local dice store or my local game store and give them this box and say the first kid who comes in asking about D&D and wanting to know how to get started or a parent who wants to be able to get them started, just give them this gift for free instead of having them buy a starter set or a player's handbook. I also snuck in some secret Ribonator goodies inside the present, but that's just for whoever opens it to find. And I hope that you all have a Merry Dicemas. Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, whatever you celebrate, I just hope that you have a great one. Like the video if you like it, subscribe if you might want to see some more like this in the future, comment dislike since otherwise we won't see your dislike if you dislike it, still want to see that too, and again, I hope that you all have a fantastic holiday season.